Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem ecma'in. Allahümme enfa'ni bime allemteni ve allemni bime yenfa'ni ve zidni enmen innekel alimul hakim. Allahümme akhvizna min zulumatil vahim ve akrimna binubil fahim ve fte'a aleyna bima'rifetil alim ve sehhel ahlakana bil hilm. Allahümme azıqni ni'metel ikhlas. Bildi vajhika kerim bi kulli ma kul ve bi kulli ma fa'al. Amin ya Rabbil alamin. My topic today is about acquired cystic kidney disease. Acquired cystic kidney disease was first described in 1977. And it is a condition that occurs in patients with end-stage renal disease, especially when on dialysis treatment. And they don't have history of other cystic renal disease. The incidence with amount of time a patient is azotemic and has estimated 44% after three years of dialysis and 90% after 10 years of dialysis. It is equally common in hemodialysis as, as with peritoneal dialysis. Patient usually asymptomatic, cyst hemorrhage may cause flank pain and hematuria. The pathology of the acquired cystic kidney disease in patients with uremia is associated with the eventual development of acquired cystic kidney disease. The pathogenesis is currently unknown. Some theories suggest that tubular epithelial hyperplasia from accumulation of growth factors such as epidermal growth factor may play a role. The hyperblastic renal cyst in acquired cystic kidney disease have been considered a possible source of dialysis associated with renal cell carcinoma. Here, the summary of uh, the proposal pathophysiology for cyst formation and malignant formation of the patient with acquired kidney cystic disease, renal parenchymal destruction lead to azotemia, electrolyte imbalance, and renin angiotensin system, tumor, tubular cell hypertrophy or hyperplasia, and lead to hyperplasia, growth factor here, inflammation, hyperparathyroidism, and this lead to cyst formation and activated proto-oncogenesis and constitutive cell growth, adenoma stage, and lead to adenocarcin. Other additional risk factor, gender, race, cyst, size, years on dialysis. Here, a patient with uh, acquired cystic kidney disease on about 10 years on dialysis, and here we see small kidneys with multiple cysts and mass in the right kidney here, and this is the patient after nephrectomy. And the mass is renal cell carcinoma. The radiologic features of the 
include multiple bilateral small renal cysts in both cortex and medulla, common in the cortex and kidney is increase, decrease in size, small in size due to chronic renal disease. Here, this is ultrasound of patient with uh, acquired cystic kidney disease and renal with history of renal insufficiency on hemodialysis with multiple cysts and increased renal echogenicity. Another patient with increased renal echogenicity with a small uh, with a small renal size, as uh, seen in the right kidney with multiple few numbers of cysts seen. Here, another patient with end-stage renal disease with increased renal echogenicity with multiple cysts. Here, another patient with coronal CT scan with small kidneys with patient with end stage renal disease, the kidneys are small with atrophic with multiple small cysts. Here another patient with acquired cystic kidney disease demonstrated in bilateral renal cyst an advanced patient with uh, end stage renal disease. Here, this is the MRI T2 fat set with small kidneys with multiple renal cysts, noted small less than 5 millimeter involving both kidneys. The complication of the cyst, it is hemorrhage, which occur occasionally, development of renal cell carcinoma, as we discussed. Renal transplantation has been thought to resolve acquired renal cyst, but the, still there is a renal cell carcinoma in the native kidneys. Subhanak, thank you for listening and hoping to see you soon in another talk. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.